we've seen that the thumb is the main player in our hand, but our other four digits also have a vital role in our dexterity. So do they all play an equal part? That's what we're going to look at next in our dissection. Wow, that is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, you, you've laid bare the internal workings of the hand. Yes, you can see Quentin's isolated and identified all of the major structures in the palm now. Can I ask you, George, it, it, you can see the four fingers here almost equal as a group against the thumb, but if you were to lose a finger by choice, which one would you, do you think you could do without? I have a feeling I'm going to get this wrong, but I would have said the small finger, but I, but I, yeah. I just know it's wrong. You were right the first time, you got yeah. it wrong, yes. <laughs> um, the one, again, it might surprise you even more, that one would lose would be the index. The index finger? Yes. The index finger would be the one you could most do without. The index, that is surprising. Yes, the index is a bit of a paradox, really. Um, although it's included in everything we do, you can exclude it from everything you do. You can hold a pen and write in the same handwriting with the index excluded. Mm. The little finger, in fact, is much more important than one thinks. It's vital for grip. It can approach the thumb very much more than the other fingers. Mm. Um, we've shown a group of muscles that are dedicated to the thumb and there's an identical group of muscles dedicated to the little finger. They're slimmer and finer, but actually they do exactly the same thing. They even have the same names virtually. And in fact, when the thumb comes across to give you precision grip, the little finger is able to approach it in a way to make its task easier. And the little finger is the most mobile finger after the thumb. Before we can see inside the other fingers, Quentin has to remove the skin. While he does this, Donald's going to show me how our fingers give us unparalleled fine control. So far, we've looked at grip, which is immensely strong, but not very versatile. If we wanted versatility, you're going to have to go down to these small joints. And an example of this would be unscrew the bottle. You see that? You're using your fingertips now, and that is three-point or chuck Ooh, grip. That's... I'll do it. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, George. I'm okay, <laughs> if you do that, you see now I'm using only those end joints. Yeah. That's a very much more precise, but of course weaker, action. If we want it to be very precise, for instance, to write, then what we must do is eliminate all the big, let's call them clumsy boys, and... <laughs> The clumsy muscles. Precisely. They're powerful, but they're not very precise. And by putting my arm down like that, I've eliminated all action of the big, strong muscles. That's interesting, because if you, if you want to be precise, you've got to isolate the you hand must stabilize. so that you can do that. You must stabilise your It's either flat. Yes. Or artists often have a, a brace, a, a stick. That's right. That's which right. Which they can paint with. I am <laughs> using, and I need to use, these very precise um, small muscles and small joints in the hand. Um, when I operate, for example, it is, you will see any surgeon operating with any precision, he will often immobilize his entire uh, forearm right down to the tip of the little finger in order to be precise with his instruments. All these types of grip I've given you, they're, to some extent, that's an artificial division. Every task requires the right amount of force or precision. So one's always going from one type of grip to another. 